Hello everyone, Shinto Bean here playing some more Warhammer Combat Cards Campaign Mode. And we are playing the final part of the expedition in this anniversary event. Part 3, where we are approaching Terra. And we are playing as the Forces of Chaos against the Imperium, once again a combination of Space Marines and Servants of the Emperor. And we have some really nice rewards on this third day. Some solid guaranteed cards, the Occult Sorcerer is a pretty powerful one. The Blood Angels Librarian Dreadnought which has Sonic Blast, and then two copies of Inquisitor Greyfax, who is one of the most powerful and fun warlords, in my opinion. Also got plenty of card packs, coins, a plasma, and also a cosmetic item as well. For the modifiers, we are going to be using max level cards, and we also have access to the full number of deck points. So this should be pretty fun. Um, I think this event has received mixed feedback from a lot of players. I think a lot of veteran players were not very excited by the fact that we had to use lower level cards than normal. And for me personally, I didn't find the the enemy decks to be very fun to play against. I mean, they were a little bit different than what you might normally face, and you had to use a slightly different strategy. but. Overall, just uh, not a whole lot of fun when compared to the Skulls event uh, that we had a few months ago. So, hopefully Day 3 will be a little bit more fun. Now, we've been using Ariman up to this point, but since I'm almost finished with the missions, I'm going to change it up and use, hopefully, uh, a slightly more fun build. This is something that I actually have not been able to run because I don't have the cards at a high enough level. Uh, it is with the Mask. Where Focusing on Slanesh here, so let's take a closer look at this deck. Now the mask is has not performed very well for me, so I haven't really used her, but I think she would combo well with the Keeper of Secrets and also Celeste. Now these are two cards that are extremely powerful at the upper levels, uh, but I do not have them at a high enough level for them to actually be useful. Uh, fortunately with the modifiers, they are exceedingly powerful, so I'm looking forward to seeing them in action here. And pretty much everything else in here exists solely to keep these two cards alive. We've got some healing through the Plague Surgeon, and then we've got three Taunt Bodyguards, and the Demonette, uh, the little Shambler, and then the Chaos Ogryn, and then the Screamer of Zinch without Flank. So I think the main issue with this deck is that uh, there's kind of too many support cards so the opening hand might not actually have the Keeper of Seekers or the or Celesque. And if that happens, well, it's going to be a terrible start. But going to take that risk and hopefully just hope that we have some good luck here. Now, I don't really know what we're going to be facing. Uh, this is the very first match in this uh, third day. I just re read in the description that um, I think we can ex expect to face some of the Custodes. Now, the, the Warlord we're up against is Inquisitor Greyfax. Let's see what she's running. She does have Space Marines, and she is getting a 48% boost. That's a pretty massive boost to the to the bodyguards. However, that does not affect the Space Marine cards in that deck. So, all right, we got Celeste on the field at the very beginning. That's a good start. She's got the Inspiring Presence, and affected, of course, by the Quicksilver Swiftness. Now, it is the opponent's turn. So they're going to get the first attack. However, with the swiftness, as long as our cards stay above 60% of their health, they will be attacking first on the opponent's turn. Okay, Keepers, Seekers coming down. This is perfect. This is exactly what I wanted to see. All right, my two big units on the field. And they are going to be taunting. So two powerful barrage units coming to the field as well. Okay, so... Uh, how much damage do these guys do? That's 57. And, of course, the Keeper of Secrets has Fear, which is reducing the damage by 60%. Um, I think I'm going to go just with the Shambler here, trying to put down the weaker Taunt units. And actually, maybe I should have put it on the opposite side so that... Well, I guess it doesn't really matter because they have Taunt anyway. So they're going ranged, but we do get to attack first. Unfortunately, that Deathwing Knight is able to take a huge amount of punishment. Got the two barrage attacks hitting the Shambler, but yeah, that uh, the barrage is dealing a little bit too much splash damage for my liking. Now we do get to the debuff their ranged here and then hit them with psychic attacks. 
So we can just go for Psychic on our turn. Wow, that thing still survived. That night, man, the taunt, max level taunt is pretty nasty. All right. Uh, once again, we get to attack first on their turn, but they do get their attacks in. Uh, the Quicksilver Swiftness is best when you are able to destroy the enemy unit uh, before it gets a chance to attack. But unfortunately, that has not happened yet. And they are getting a massive boost to their stats. Or not their stats, but their uh, their ready bars, as you can see. But they are mo deploying mostly Space Marines. So uh, they are not benefiting from the special rule of Grayfax at all. So not too worried at this point. Shambler is going to die. We do have to take out these, these guys with Barrage, though. They're dealing too much damage. All right, going to put down the Demonette this time on the opposite side. And now we can finally kill off the um, Aggressor in the center lane. All right, and they're going for the ranged attack. Once again, we get to attack first. As long as our bodyguards are glowing pink, they get to attack first on the opponent's turn. Okay. And now we can probably just go with either Psychic, maybe Melee as well. Whoa, but okay. That is one of the nastiest custodies I've ever seen. This guy has four shields and over 300 health. Now, he is benefiting from Inquisitor Greyfax, so that, that's pretty terrifying, actually. Uh, the Demonet is reducing their melee attack, but this is a, a real issue with this deck. We have no area of effect attacks. So, another Custody is coming to the field, and he is going to be able to hit pretty hard. Thankfully, the Fear is reducing the damage there. They are going for the melee attack. 106 damage from that Custodian, and Celesque has been reduced below the 60% uh, health threshold. Now, we can bring it back up with the Plague Surgeon. I'm wondering if that's the right thing to do, though. We still have to get through... Two more shields here. I think we are actually going to do that, though. Uh, put down the Surgeon, and hopefully that increases their health enough. 86 and 99. Okay, they're getting the, the Swiftness back. So we will be able to attack first on their turn. Uh, I'm going to go for the Psychic attack here, I think. Could go ranged as well. No, we're going to go Psychic. And debuffing their ranged attack. Inquisitor Greyfax, of course, is herself is also going to be extremely powerful at level 7. Although, actually, her attack stats are not really that high. Oh, and, okay, was not expecting that. They have a, a big ranged unit on the field now. With Big Game Hunter, that's going to be dealing a lot of extra damage to Celeste. 177. Celeste just barely survives. The Keeper of Secrets still has the Quicksilver Swiftness. But this is a pretty rough battle. Uh, we could switch to the melee attack, I think. Do I want to do that or just save it for the very end? I'm not sure if it's going to make a huge difference. They're just going to go ranged and probably kill off Celesque next turn. I think we'll just go with the, the psychic attack here. And I don't think we actually have to worry about the custodian in the center lane. We can just move the Keeper of Secrets over to the center and go for the big melee attack. Alright, big buff to the damage there. They're going for the ranged, of course. And, yeah, that Nephilim Jet Fighter is pretty terrifying at the max level. Keeper of Secrets is still doing just fine thanks to the fear. Gonna move that over to the center. We'll put down the Screamer for a big outflank. Actually, forgot to check how much damage Grayfax can do there with all the, the buffs. But after the fear, she is not able to deal very much to this uh, Keeper of Secrets. We'll go for the melee attack here. 137. Wow, 352 health, though. That's going to take a little while to get through, for sure. And 83 damage from the Custodian, actually taking down the Screamer in one turn. Okay. Uh, let's put down the Ogryn. And I imagine they'll keep going ranged here. Uh, we still get to attack first, but that doesn't actually really do anything. 
Alright, at this point we could go for a psychic attack. I think that'll probably be the best choice. We don't want to go melee uh, because that custodian is just... This guy does so much damage. Alright, 82 psychic damage, debuffing both their ranged and melee. And it's taken a little while to get through these guys, but it looks like the Slanish forces, mainly the Keeper of Secrets, is going to be able to do the trick here. Still over 60% uh, of its health. At this point, it will have to switch over to one of the lanes, and the mask actually does have enough attack, I think. It also has Inspiring Presence. Don't believe we've been debuffed here, so should be good and able to destroy Grayfax with a final melee attack. Alright, just curious, just out of curiosity, 111 ranged damage, 72 psychic, and then 205 total melee. We're definitely going to go with melee there and end this first battle. Okay, so that was actually pretty fun. I enjoyed that. I, I do like being able to use something other than just Zinch, which unfortunately uh, in this expedition, I know they were going for a specific narrative uh, story behind this campaign, but um, it, it is a lot more fun when you're able to have more freedom to build the type of deck that you want. So, um, yeah. Stage 3, uh, because I have almost cleared all of the missions, uh, I think I'll try out a few different warlords and, and deck builds. It'll be fun to use these max level cards. So let me know what sort of deck that you would like to use uh, when you have access to all, all of your cards at max level. And tell me what, you, what you've thought of this expedition uh, event as a whole. I think for the anniversary event, uh, they've been very generous for the rewards. Like for these uh, one day campaigns, we are getting pretty much, I think, just as much rewards as you would from a full week, uh, a week-long campaign. So getting several weeks worth of rewards in a very short time, uh, very generous. But again, the the gameplay itself has been uh, less than exciting, I would I would say. So uh, I'd be curious to hear your thoughts about that, and uh, any sort of things you'd like to see in the future, or if you could make any changes to uh, this style of expedition, uh, what would they be? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.